Hey, Ian, you ready? I bet I am. What are we talking about tonight? And talk about guns? If it's not a 30 cal, I'm not in. Jeez, mate, that's not very inclusive. Have you seen Jono? Hey, Jono, you ready? Well, God knows where he is, mate. He's probably caught up in the neighbor's wire again. Are you ready to go? Let's do this. Mate, I'm ready. Let's crank it up. Righto then. Welcome back, listeners, to another episode of The Hunter's Campfire where we're going to talk about all things hunting and the great outdoors. And we'll probably throw in a few tips along the way. You want a tip? Say it once, say it a thousand times. Goats love rocks. Or a few things about deer. Mark, what do you reckon about deer? As a deer hunter, I love hunting pigs. Well, that's about as useful as I expected it to be. Oh, check it out. Here comes Jono. He's being chased by the neighbor's dog. Okay, guys, let's get this started. Welcome to the Hunter's Campfire. Pull up a chair, get comfortable, it's time for the Hunter's Campfire. If in your skirt, maybe you want to wear pants. What do they call them? Schmorts, shorts, shorts. May the shorts be with you. No, the oh. little sh- the shirt, the skirts with the leggings in them. No, 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 no the girls are wearing oh, skirts. 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 They're skirts. called skirts. That's it. Yeah. Skirts. He knows what yes. I'm talking about. Yeah, well, I've got a daughter who goes to school. So That's yes. right. Yeah. Oh, well, oh, amazing. There we go. Well, so, yeah. <laughs> well, the kids who go to oh, girls. Well, I'm glad you started this episode with fashion again. <laughs> <laughs> the girls who wear, well, not girls actually, but if you want to wear a skirt at school, you can get these things skirts, which are like, like a skirt with, an, with leggings in it. I don't know. We'll get, we can get a blaze one for you for, for hunt camp, mate. I'm sure. Well, I'm just oh, saying, if it's wonder, cold actually, up your skirts, you could go to school. I wonder. I wonder if old mate, old mate, could uh, he's going to make the tactical mankini. <laughs> the tactical man. <laughs> See, make, what I don't understand is what is what? the difference between a tactical mankini and a standard pockets. mankini? It's got pockets. It's got, it's got pockets for ammo. Pockets. And oh, where? Where the, and where the where the oh, where? Oh, no. oh, no. It's I'm got a pouch in it. Yeah, pouch. It's got what do they call it? It's got that oh, mole webbing in it, so you can have attachments. Molly, 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 yeah. Molly. Yeah. Molly. You can it's put attachments to it. That's so James, if you're listening, um, we need yeah, to add that's the difference. a squat, a squat uh, in uh, Cody Guerin's sizes. Yep, there we go. Yes. So yeah. Hunter's, Hunter's Campfire <laughs> logo in. Right at the crotch, right at the crotch. <laughs> to, to kind of bring this back to a close, we were going to do a, a podcast yeah. tonight with me up in the Brisbane Valley. I would have been doing it from the tractor shed, which does have 240 volt. Um, uh, it might have been a bit blowy um, and the signal's okay. So we would have been fine. So, yeah, we were going to do a podcast. It just changed a bit. So. Oh, well. What's been going on? Talk about the week. Sure, go for it. You're the one who went somewhere. Well, we've all been somewhere. Uh, yeah, well, true enough. True enough. I had I had a cracking trip. If you've watched our social channels, you would have noticed that I went down to Melbourne for two day a two day VIP. Uh, I guess you call it VIP session. It, it wasn't an organised VIP session. It just turned out that way. Um, we were going down to do some recording with our friends at Beretta, uh, and. Uh, because we're doing um, some work with them around uh, shotguns, um, you'll see that we've uh, taken up trap shooting. I've taken up trap shooting competitively again. Uh, John shoots pretty regularly at the club, and Mark likes bowling stuff in the paddock. Uh, so we're we're having a look at the various different uh, shotguns that are available. And I went down to Bruder and because uh, I'm picking up a, a competition gun again, uh, I went for the full uh, Beretta treatment which is fitting through customization and spending time with the workshop guys around maintenance and everything. And it was just a sensational two days. It was unreal. They, um, they had, uh, 
everyone available to have a conversation with. Um, they were ready to chat and, you know, we took some pretty cool content. Um, but as well as that, we got a full view of the factory, which was just such an impressive facility. Um, so uh, they're obviously really proud of what they do. Um, you can see that in the quality of the guns and you can see that in the quality of the way they present themselves and you can see that in the quality of the building they work in. Um, yeah, it was just a, it was just a great experience. Uh, also, while I was there, managed to catch up with Lue, who uh, runs the business called um, Gun Dog Gear. So, if you have a look on some of the vids that we've got, um, Missy runs around with the Gun Dog Gear collar and blaze orange vest, and a few other items that that Lue uh, either has manufactured or imports. Um, but yeah, he um, he spotted that we were in Melbourne and, and caught up with us for a few drinks on uh, Thursday night. That's good to catch up with nice. person. Uh, but overall, the trip to Melbourne was was just awesome. I, I can't wait to go back. I think John, you went down for a dealer day, which was a lot of fun. Um, Correct. Yeah. I uh, I've managed to do mine, and we're going to get hopefully Mark will get down there shortly, and um, we've got some uh, conversations to have with him about fancy, 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 guns. fancy, 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 yeah, I like you know, my fancy gun. Uh, you'll, see, you'll see a heap of content coming out shortly. If you're getting into shotgunning, um, this whole series that we're putting together will be the start to finish of how to approach it, get into it, start getting the competition or getting the club shooting. Um, we're firm believers that um, you know getting into a sport like shooting plays, sporting plays, um, even if it's just socially, you know, a lot of us, um, a lot of us will pick a rifle up for the for the rut. And you might get two or three hunts a year, and then you put it down again, and life will go on. Uh, being able to join a shotgun club and go down for a monthly shoot and a bit of a social keeps you familiar with guns, keeps you familiar with oh. how you're handling things, um, gets that reactive, instinctive shooting working well. Uh, you know, if you're familiar with a shotgun and you're, and you're chasing clays, then that absolutely um, moves across. That skill comes across with you when you're instinctive shooting in the bush. Uh, mm. Not that we condone shooting things on a run, but it, it will give you that, you know, that extra edge when it comes to seeing an animal and, mm. and having a good crack at it. So mm. um, that's what it's all about. It'll it'll link the two together, and uh, if you've got any questions, just sing that. So that was mm. Melbourne. Loved it. It's awesome. Cool. And mm. I'll just say with with the clays as well. It's also very social. I find whereas rifle shooting can be quite isolated. You know, you're going out yeah. hunting on your own. I go up off very often on a Friday afternoon up to my local club here at Caboolture, um, and Adam will come with me, my you know eight-year-old son. He'll go and play in the playground. I can go for a shoot. There's other kids there. They run around and play. Once you finish shooting, you pack your guns away. You can go for a quick beer and have a chat to everyone. It's it's very social, I find. So yeah. it's it's very much a club atmosphere. Um, and for people new to shooting, it's good to meet you know like-minded individuals. So I think it's it's a great a great environment for you know for new shooters especially to come into. Yeah, I think so. And and you'll hear it here first, uh, a couple of things that are in the program that might interest some of you. Um, we're going to run some come and try days. Haven't picked the dates yet, but come and try days. Um, there's two, two focuses around that. The first one is come and try play shooting. If you haven't done it, come down with us, um, have a go, and see what you think of it. It's good fun. We'll have the social while we're there. Um, there's a very good chance that our friends at Beretta will bring up an array of their shotguns from the entry through to the pro level. So come and try, won't be just try and smash some clays, but it'll also come and try, you know, some of the um, the really good quality guns that they might bring up for us. So those those two items are in the pipeline. But the other thing that I'm really excited to be able to start to think about putting together, and that'll be a, a bit of a into hunters campfire uh, clay target shooting competition. Um, so we're going to, um, if you're interested, uh, let us know. Um, ping us a message. We're gonna we're gonna organise a day. Or a weekend where uh, people can come and enter uh, a bit of a fun novelty sort of weekend shooting competition might shoot a bit of everything from sporting clays to down the line to a bit of uh, skeet shooting a bit of tower shooting um, just lots of different um, things and we might ask people to you know squad up with a team of four register come down um, have a bit of fun win bragging rights maybe a prize or two as well uh, but it could be a lot of fun and uh, I look lots forward to um, showing John how it's done Good. Mm. Mm. I'm sure you will. Yeah, we'll see. No, you I, I'm, I'm I'm terrible in flies. So all the good shooters find Mark. He's looking for help. No, <laughs> no, I, I don't mind being terrible in clay. So I enjoy it. 
still good yeah, fun. It's yeah, it's exactly. Oh yeah, it's right. I, I, I like it. I'm just not particularly good at. It. Um, yeah, it's, it's, yeah. It's great. I've, I, I sh- I've, I've shot more of live games than I've really <laughs> with clays. Yeah, so, yeah. But I, I do enjoy um, shot gunning. I just don't it's do it often. Mm. Yeah. Not often. We'll find, we'll find a location if people want to come into state. They can fly in, come for mm. a weekend. It'll be camp friendly type thing. So yeah, we'll see how it goes. But uh, let's know what you think. Uh, otherwise, look out for the event when it pops up on our social page. Hmm. Mm. What about you, Jono? So I'm still getting hunt camp ready. I've got some new toys that have arrived this week. Mark, I got the. Uh, I got a bone to pick with you actually. I ordered the uh, the camera off Amazon oh, uh, that you that right. you recommended. Oh, that you right recommended. Camera. It's not right the game cam. Exactly, it's not, not the front screen. screen. That's it. Not the front screen. That's the one that that was the link that was in the uh, in the message that I bought it. Why and why is it you picking me so what say because you're scared of Amazon, you think gonna have a crack at me, are you? <laughs> no, but this was the link that you shared and I ordered that camera and it's not the right camera. So I've got a bone to pick with you. So it was the link that you posted in our chat. It was the link you posted in our chat, and that's there the one that is. I ordered. There we go. It's not the right camera. So buddy, buddy, you buddy. You sent me a dodgy. You sent me a dodgy link. Buddy, buddy, um, buddy. I'm <laughs> don't know how to tell you this. But, um, <laughs> that was so the you, purchase that I got. Yeah. Maybe well, Amazon just doesn't like you, mate. And maybe that's maybe, what it is. Maybe, maybe they, they don't. Just don't like you. And to be honest, I actually bought, and this is the first ever purchase I've made off, is it Temu, the ch- Chinese oh, store? So there you go. Oh, yeah. Ooh, no, no, no. Th- so this is a different one. It's my first did get, ever purchase. Did you, get, did you get 80% off on the spinning wheel? <laughs> I always get 80% off on the spinning wheel. So, <laughs> so I got I got the Temu camera, which is That's exactly also... the same as the ones I've got. That's the same as what you get at... That's right. That's it. So yeah. you bought the same camera. It's just one of them. Pretty much. One of them. <laughs> You have to pay yeah. double the price on the other one. So, that's right. Yeah. And, I think and the other one now is that you basically, or oh, that one's got a chip in again, it. So basically, everything front, you do is like. It's going to get yeah. recorded, yeah. That's so, right. Well, yeah. if, you're, if yeah. you're Frank, he solved this problem if you haven't seen. He carries around a shaving mirror. Yeah, I, I, I actually. You can see. That, I, I, that's a good I, idea. What if you got a slightly <laughs> angled wrong? Like, it's not, you know. Yeah. Yeah. So if only if only the Amazon one was front facing like market told me it was. Well, I'm going to I'm going to have a look at that right now. I'm I'm keep keep was the link was the, was the link that you sent me and that's the one I bought. So okay. Quite, 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 uh, so it was it would have been to it would have been to our shared one in our shared Facebook chat. Yeah, there okay. is the link that you posted and that is the one that I ordered. Well, interestingly enough, I took that link and I posted it to exactly so, it onto our website as a featured product. I think you did. So everyone's going to be buying the wrong camera, thanks to Oh, Mark. no. I don't know about oh, that. God. Anyway, not going to look at that now. Takes away from yeah. the discussion. I'm, 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 I'm just trying to find a link. Because Hunt Camp's so close, we've got people in the crew that are cruising around, scouting spots, doing things, uh, sitting there minding my own business, and one of the guys sends me a photo. It's just your trail camera. <laughs> Thanks, Adam. Yeah. You know, remember Adam from such, I oh know he hasn't been on our, we haven't released that video no, yet. No, we've had posts. We've had a couple of posts with Adam. Adam came on Slam 2 with us. Um, yes. Yep, yeah, that, that was a really good trip. But um, he's, apparently I challenged him to find my camera and he bloody well did. So, not sure what obscenities would have been done in the view, but we'll find that out in a few weeks. If it's anything like uh, Dave Willey's. And obscenity that he posts in the uh, in the group chat. Yeah, yeah I, 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 from... I see that. I just don't want to. I just I just kind of go. Okay, I'll come back a bit later. <laughs> oh, I, don't yeah. need, I, don't, I don't need good, to be part of that Dave, conversation. Good old Dave Willie. Good old Dave Willie. Um, yes. Anyway, man, when, did I, when did I post that? Man, I'm scrolling so far back. Scroll, scroll, scroll. Can't find it. I can find it for you. It doesn't matter. What else? You got your camera. I got my cameras. What else? So, is what's in the back, what mate? Send You're them back. Tell them that's not what you want. I don't have time to send them back and get more because Hunt Camp is looming ever, ever closer. Um, we've got Easter coming up, and then Sorry. it's yeah. Um, and what else I've got is my new pack has arrived. 
which is a That's beauty. A very... You can see Mystery Ranch. Yeah. Could, That's a very nice um, pack. It is stunning, actually. It's so comfortable. Um, I've unpacked it and I've worn it and tried it on. And so there's, yeah, what, it's there's a weight in it? I, find I haven't put any weird and awkward until they've got some weight in them. Otherwise, they're just sort of can yeah, be, yeah. Um, but I haven't, no, I haven't, I haven't packed it yet, and um, and tried it on with some weight. Um, but no, literally, I got the adjustments right, which actually was pretty easy to do. Um, I've worked out how to open well, it up to get them each shelf. Mystery ranch. This is the sawtooth. 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 So what, sawtooth. So what, what's sawtooth. all about the sawtooth? What? What's? What's? So it's got the. Bi- it's got the big open pouch, so this whole thing flops open. Mm. I think so you can open the, like a like a luggage style zip type. Yeah, thing, so you can it. actually get full access to it. Plus, it's got the the frame built into it, um, and it actually expands out. So you've got the meat shelf, so you can actually load so it's it up. Got a, an external meat shelf. It does, yes. So the actual, mm. it's not like um, where it doesn't detach, but it actually opens up and folds out, and then you can stack it with meat. You can release the straps and actually close the bag then around the meat. So yeah. it's um yeah, it's a pretty awesome pack. So you can see how it's like that. There's the pack as you would wear it. Yeah. There's a, a clip here which This is great you, um, great, great listening content. That's the key. Okay. And then this opens out. It is opening and the top fold, oh okay. So it peels away from the top out. and hinges at the bottom yeah. of the frame. Yeah. And, and then this but this literally this does disconnect if you wanted to. But yeah. then all the meat loads into here. You can see it folds out into like a meat shelf. Yep. Yeah. And you can stack everything in there and then this just comes around it like that. And then you just yeah. cinch it back tight. And cinch it back in and tighten it out. So it's really, really awesome. Um it's a great pack. Really, really good. Cool. And these, these um meat meat shelf, meat hauling pack systems have been around a little while but it's uh, there's a few of them there now, and um, I reckon they are so well suited to uh, state forest hunting. You know, the half I, day, I, full yeah. day, yeah, um, where you want to load it out. Uh, yeah, would have been good with Mark in one today, actually. Yeah, I think, yeah, yeah. wouldn't have said no. Um, wouldn't have said no. Yeah, anyway, you're gonna have to yeah. tell us about your day now, Mark. Oh, yeah. Okay, sure. Into it. So, I'm just looking at the photo, too. That was a good photo I took today. There you go. Double four? No, nah, three four. Three four. Okay. Three four. Mm. It's a little roughy. You didn't call it I don't like calling them coals. I don't like calling them coals. I don't think a three four would be a coals. I don't like calling the, the, I, the to me they're a roughy, you know. They're they're either they're either shiny or a roughy. A coal's like, you know, you just kill mm. because 'cause they're a coal. No, he's a nice it, deer, he's just a bit he's a nice deer, he's just you know, he just missed down on a couple of little jeans, but he's a nice fella. Was there any roaring? Was he roaring? No, that's the whole thing. So, um, just like last year, I drove them into the rain. It was exactly the same as last year. That's actually my Facebook profile picture. Is me under that oh, tarp dro- last dro- year? You know, twenty twenty three, getting poured on rain. Um, that was twenty twenty three. So I drove up, but it was different this year. It wasn't like. It was rained all the way, but it wasn't torrential. But there was a, a for those who were out at four o'clock this morning, there was quite a wind blowing with it. It was like it was a um, blowing hard last night. I mm. yeah, I got it actually woke me up because my shed door blew shut and smashed. Yeah, so it, it was yeah. it was really scudding. So uh, I left here at f- just after four. Um, easy drive up, took it easy. Um, Jesus, a lot of people come down that sun, that coast road and mm-hmm. coming in Brisbane and stuff. That Bruce Highway, yeah. I feel sorry gym. for those people who have to travel that time of day, but going yeah. up was empty. Got the Whamaran, had a, the coffee shop. There's a coffee shop in Whamaran that literally opens up like at 3 a.m. or something. Which one's that there by the butcher? Is it a bakery as well? No, there's a bakery next door. It's in that little um that little group of shops near the petrol station. Oh yeah, yep, I know the one you mean. They're yep. literally they're just they just I don't know they mm. they don't they ever sleep but they're in there making stuff so i went grab, grabbed a coffee um kept on going got to the block had a look at the paddock um actually tried the thermal but since it was raining it was just like <laughs> why yeah. didn't work so, I put it back. so decided yeah i'm going i'm going for it so uh put on um my rain gear and headed up 
found some big pig sign. I mean, fresh, very, 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 very fresh pig sign. I thought, I'll just try, follow this, see where it goes. Follow it up. Um, there's cattle now on the on the block. The 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 block that I usually start on is split in two, basically. It's two blocks, and the cattle on one. And I actually went to the cattle block because the they've been they've eaten down the grass, so it's easier to move through it. Because on the other side, it's you know the grass is still like five foot tall. Um, so I was pretty saturated anyway, but I decided to stick to the easier one. Got to the very top, and um, went over and headed towards the the block next door, which I now have access to. And as I was coming down through the trees, spotted two deer off in the distance, about three hundred meters. Oh, okay, deer here. Sat down, and as you do, as we spoke about last week, sit down, and all of a sudden, oh, there's more of them. And there's more of them, and there's more of them, and they started popping out, you know, popping out of the same hill that they weren't there a second ago, and finally uh, a stag appeared, um, little roughy three four. I thought he was a double three. He's actually a three four, but couldn't at the distance. They're about three hundred meters, but they're moving towards me, so I just watched them for for a while, and the only problem I had was there was two hinds kind of quite far off and I thought oh they'll spot me moving those two the other ones were kind of going down there was actually because all the rain up there because I've had like 70 mils on the on the property in the last couple of days there's a there was a, a temporary walleye in a, in the tree line and they were heading to that walleye but there was two deer hanging off and I thought they'll see me so I thought I had to figure out how to how to get in position so I just started slowly edging towards them as they edged towards me and did a big crawl scoot through the long grass, which actually provides a fantastic cover if you don't stand up. Scooted down. I had that um that Cedar Summit R saver that I like to carry with me. It was a, it was a wet R saver today. <laughs> so I just sat on it. I didn't want to scoot on it because it was too noisy, but I kept on taking it with me and putting it down and sitting on it. And, and I had a couple. Of, thing or you blow it up? Yeah, it's one of those self-inflating things. But I just had it open. I, I just had it open, just to basically being a pad to sit on. Because I was in, you know, long, long wet grass. So I was just using it as a pad. I, I'm sure I've got about a thousand ticks on me. I'm positive because <laughs> I was literally crawling through long grass for ages. Um, kept going, kept going, kept going. Got into a um, got down to around a hundred and. I think it was 145 metres when I took the shot, but they were still a bit further back. So I got down to that and they just edged quite closer and closer and closer. Um, got behind, kind of just sat off a big gum. So that blocked those two hinds because I was a little bit worried of them picking me up. Um, put the, the uh, bipod out, the big, I got, you know, like shooting sticks, a bipod. Um, put those out. Got it in the rest in the long grass and just waited. It took about an hour all up, just waited, waited, and finally he just walked out and presented a fantastic, not broadside, kind of a little bit quartering, and um, got the hammer on him and uh, that hit him right up front in the shoulder, but it didn't go like shoulder, shoulder, or shoulder inside. And I'm shooting those um, normal Oryx, and they're 180 grains. They're a bomb. Mm. What are, what's and the construction of that projectile? Are the, are the, are the it is. A, it's, it's a, well, it's, it, has a, it has a soft point, but I think it's a bonded soft point. It's a bonded bonded soft point. So yeah. I've got those in my 9.3. That's what I've zeroed that for, for buff. Yeah. Are they the normal projectile as well? Or are they lead? They've got lead, yeah. They're yeah, a soft the, the, the soft point is lead. No, they're not the polymer tips or anything no, like that. No, they're, they're not. They're, they're, they're not a... Very not traditional... A, yeah, they're not a ballistic tip. They're they're a true what um, you would call a true hunting round. So uh, bonded with a with a lead core with a exposed lead core. So you know you get that expansion. Mm. The lead that's gonna fold. be my that's my buffalo round in the yeah, nine point three. Yeah, because I, I've got that video done putting together. Of, I've met the range with them, and I wanted to about sighting in that rifle using that, and I wanted to have something to say. Well, that's how it works. So that rifle was set basically um, just just about an inch high at 200. Um, 
And so it was basically put it on him and hit him up front. You can see from one of the shot, shots, you can see where the hit is up, up high on the front and did a couple of elliptical pirouettes, you know, try to move. Mm. He went, eh, eh, but I, when I, as soon as I see him move, I went, oh, I've got him. Talked about the other day. Yeah. So I knew I had him as soon as I to see him move. So basically he, he tried to move away and he just did a circle, but kind of like a, you know, in a, more of an elliptical circle, not a, not a, true circle and then he did another one and down he went and he kicked kicked and I, I was watching him and then he did a big kick and I thought oh he's going to try to get up and he did the big kick and that was mm. it that was his energy and then he was st- he's still and when I went down you could see the spray that's what he, he was just spraying and as he's walking so he was just bleeding everywhere so he bled out mm. and um I took the some meat off him. I was going to take all the meat. I took some meat off him. And I took the 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 headgear off him for my my eldest, which I always do. And um, his the chest cavity was blech. <laughs> so it was it was a big hard hit. Um, didn't didn't rupture anything in in uh, in the gut area, but the chest cavity was smashed to pieces because I. Even whenever I leave a carcass, I I, I I don't cut the guts, but I have the guts out of the animal because I reckon they'll they'll break down quicker, you know. No way. Mm. Yeah. So mm. and uh, and and so and saw up through the rib cage up to the up to the sternum, so it's open completely. So I, I saw inside what it was like, and boy, it was messy. Just just mince. Did you look at what damage the bullet had done? Did you oh, take mate, it just, heart, soup, the just soup in there. Just soup everywhere, everywhere. Everything was just soup. So it was mm. basically a blood soup. So, um, yeah, so I got the meat off it. Um, it. It's still not cool by any means. It was cooler because it was wet and blowy, mm. but it's not cool by any means. Actually, it's got quite humid. So, mm. and because it's a cattle property, there's always flies, you know. It's always good. There's, well, there's, there's cattle- flies everywhere cattle poo everywhere so there's flies everywhere so i decided to bag it up um on before i went walk back to the truck to um get them get the gear so i bagged it up in the trees um took that bit of skin off you for you for or well, not for you for your dog in hung it all up went back up the truck came back started the, the meat processing properly skinned them out um hocked them Put them in, put them on the car fridge. Immediately punch the temperature up about fifteen degrees, which it always does. Mm-hmm. You know, it's like the car fridge is running like about three degrees, and all of a sudden it's like seventeen because it's just uh, that heat. Um, but it does kind of settle back down. Still had a fair bit of work to do. Um, because I had four cameras out, I wanted to go check those cameras, so I also went off for another walk, grabbed those cameras, mm. took the rifle with me, didn't see it. Hmm? You checked the uh, footage? Yeah, I, I got, I, I've just been looking at it now, just got a few, uh, a few deer moving between. So I put one camera on a, on a fence line and one on the dam. Uh, didn't get anything on the dam, but got, a, got, on the fence line where they're crossing, moving between the properties. That's what I wanted to see. Just basically confirm what I was thinking. There's supposed to, well, there is a big pig up there. So I was hoping to get an image of him. Haven't been able to do it. I was talking to one of the property owners. He said, yep, it's up there. He's chewed up one of the paddocks. So I'm going to probably start focusing on El Porco and see if I can find him. Um, so, yeah, so did that, got back, cleaned it up. Got those ca- trail cameras. I think I was on the. I think I was back in town by three o'clock. Good job. So it was a long day, nice. but mm-hmm. a good day. Good. Yeah. Um, no roaring, not a sound, not a peep. And yeah, these, this, this, this one was weird. Place, a little bit quiet. It was weird because they were that there, there was a lot of hinds with this stag, but there was also a young spiker amongst them, and I was wondering. Either they fully haven't heroned up yet, mm-hmm. or that young spike was just too young for that stag to see as any kind of threat. Mm. 
So he wasn't developed enough that that stag went, yeah, you're you're a male, and try to kick him out. But when when I shot, you know, they the the hinds burst. They only went about sixty seven meters before they stopped. I mean, geez, if if you if you if you were there and you wanted this, you wanted your own meat animal, they, they were just stopped. Um, and there was there was a, I thought there was five. There was well more than five. I just couldn't see the rest of them. They just poured out. So they're there and they're starting to group up, but they're not grouped up yet. And there was, and I haven't heard. No one's that I've spoke to has heard any roaring up up there at the moment. So it still hasn't happened. Mm. So I'm going to go back after the school holidays. Mm. I haven't heard of anyone saying of anyone hearing roaring yet either. Mm. I think it's and I would, I, I would expect that now. I would too. Yeah. So typically, I'd be hunting reds next week. Mm. We should have been hunting reds next week. That would typically be the week that I'm on, and you would hear them. But I've heard it's been very quiet so mm. far. So. so I usually hunt the week. This this is when I hunt this last few days oh. of March, and I find that you get the you you. Every time I've been up there, I've heard it. Some years, I've only heard it. Uh, other years, I've seen them and heard it. But no, and but that was strange because you know we had this this rain event come in this week, oh. and uh, but I mean the good thing about whilst hunting in the rain is uncomfortable, I always find it really productive. Yeah, I've that's like that fishing, one. fishing, fishing in the I, rain. I, you always catch more fish in the rain. I find. I Same. like hunting in the rain. I mean, I, I, you don't obviously you don't want to be in there like you know, a cyclone, <laughs> stuff's getting blown over and the hailstones are rolling down. But just if it's uncomfortable rain like that and there's a bit of a breeze blowing, you know, oh. it's quieter. Mm. The animals are more active because they have to be, so you're a little more likely to see them moving around. Um, you know, usually the wind direction is pretty determined and it stays that way so you don't get swapping Consistent. wind you know it's blowing from the east and it tends to do that yeah it's quieter moving through the scrub i actually find it's actually a really good time to go hunting and that's why i decided when i got there so I might as well go there you might as well yeah uh, the intention was actually stay up there as we said before stay up there tonight and hunt tomorrow but it's crappy weather and having a win, I decided. <laughs> Let's yeah, go got on. Down. It's got a stake down. There's no need to, to stay. Yeah, and I was keen to get. I need. Uh, I had to clear the fridge out because I ran out of fridge space. We had too much meat in it. Sad, isn't it? Um, so I had to get rid of the um, the frames that I had in there for the dog, and uh, I had some skins for this year's training, and I had to get rid of them because I just didn't have the space. But I kind of want to give her a tune up before we go so that she's red hot on the scent again. So I'll have to come pick that up. It's much appreciated. Well, there is a, 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 a triple bag, uh, well, not a full skin, but a fair chunk of skin with the good bits of meat hanging off it as well um, in, in our freezer at the moment waiting for your dog. So, Perfect. Thank you. So, yeah. Cool. Uh, yeah. Anything else you've got? I know you're not coming to hunt camp. Uh, uh, what other trips you got? You're going up after Easter, uh, but you're pretty much geared. You've, mm -hmm. you've got your gear sorted, and you just you've got your plan. You know what you're doing. Um, John, have you got much left to 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 get under control before we get away? Not really, to be honest. I'm slowly just piecing everything together. The last thing I need to do really is drop off my knives to get sharpened. So every year I drop them off there at the knife doctor in Stafford here in Brisbane, um, give them a good a good sharpen, uh, and then I just have to give them a, a, a touch-up throughout the season. So hoping to do that tomorrow. Um, and then I've started packing – well, not packing, but getting stuff together to pack, um, putting piles together of, of kit just because I want to be – I want to be ready, so I want to be able yeah. to get there and make sure I've got everything, and just get get out and enjoy the hunt. Enjoy the hunt. So, how about yourself? What are you What are you up to? Well, I've sharpened my own knives, and I'll take that sharpening kit in. So, anyone that wants to get them done while we're there, we can do them. Um, Mark's clearly excited about a knife. No, Mark loves his knives. No, Mark okay. loves his knives. This is my I'll, growing I'll bench. I'm a fan, but far out. Um, I feel like I've got enough, and that's that's 
saying mm. something, I guess. Um, I've still got heaps. Yeah, I know. Yeah. Have you ever got enough? Um, yeah, I'm doing quite a bit. I've got heaps of prep stuff that I'm trying to sort out. Uh, I was saying before that I've got a bit of stuff from um, Lue from Gundog Gear. Uh, I've managed to get a uh, – it's actually a Garmin product, but it's a Garmin dog vest GoPro harness. So it's made by Garmin, but it's a it's an action camera uh, vest that Missy can wear. Uh, I've used oh, okay. a similar products before, mm-hmm. but this one's a lot more robust. Um, so it goes on first and action cam goes on her. And um, a lot of these products that you buy, these action cams have got a thing called hindsight. Um, so if something happens, um, you can press the record button and it goes back a minute, captures what it already had going for a minute. Uh, but also she captures some pretty cool stuff. So if she's going in on an animal, I can hit the record button and things. We'll try and get some interesting footage out of that. And then the, the blaze orange vest goes around that again. So she's got a you know a full blaze outer which I've started to think is more and more important. Um, so that's really good. So I'm getting mm. that together. Other than that, I'm just trying to wrangle the merch. My office is stacked up like this with all of the <laughs> stuff we're going. I got another box yesterday. I got another box coming tomorrow. And that should be a – oh, no, I got another box coming in a week. That should be um, that should be the last of it. No, but, no. um yeah, it's pretty cool. There's there's a lot of fun stuff. So I'm just trying to like get that stuff all together. It's, they're gonna, yes, they're gonna be excellent. walking around with they're gonna be walking around Nanda with show bags, you know. They are. All we need <laughs> is a strawberry Sundays and we sort it. <laughs> be a, be, 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 you know, ten birdie beetles. There'll be some guy sitting and, under and, a tree. Tummy hurts. He's eating too much chocolate. There's your show bag. Look at that. He's eating too much. He's eating too much chocolate. <laughs> and he's sitting under a tree. <laughs> Stubby coolers. Just like the bags oh I god just out what these are yet i think they're frisbee fidget toys oh yeah they yeah, they're, they're, they're like a, you pop them you pop them yeah they're like uh they're like uh they're like reusable um bubble wrap yeah yeah, yeah so, one, so, so, so one of those for adam please yeah well no yeah that's it um, you do. You you're pop, sitting. I can just see this. Oh, yeah. Fidget, fidget, fidget toys. Yeah. So you're sitting, sitting, you're sitting over in the waiting for things to happen. You're popping these yeah. things, and you miss the animal, and you <laughs> fling the fridge bee at it in disgust. <laughs> um, so yes, yeah, so we. Yeah, I, you know, there's all sorts of things that are showing up that are a little bit funny. Um, but yeah, we got a bit of that. Other than that, camper came out the other day. I've stripped that back to nothing. I've even started shopping for food. That know. happened this afternoon. I've got a lot of that. Happening wow. already. Mm-hmm. Oh, I thought you were saying something, Jonas. Nice. And I also yeah. have a new pack. Have a new pack for a hunt camp. So what have, what very have, similar to Jono's. So I've got the Tatonka Modulus. So uh, if you had a look at what Jono had before, the Tatonka Modulus, very popular in New Zealand. Um, again, born out of out of uh, military supply, I think you could say and adapted for hunting uh, it's uh it's got an external frame again it's got yeah, so it's got an external frame mm-hmm. and it's got a meat shelf that you can drop down and then you clip whichever pack you want on yeah uh, you clip whichever pack you want on the outside of that frame so you can get a 30 a 50 or a 70 mm-hmm. liter uh and the concept is you're going in with your day you know you've got a small 30 liter pack on for a day trip you've got enough room for water first aid you know a bit of feed whatever but you know the pack that I've been using is a Kuyu pack. It's a the Venture Three Thousand, so it's it's a reasonable size pack, day pack, uh, and it needs to be a reasonable size because that's what I put whatever I shot in. You know, couple of couple of legs inside, couple of legs strapped to the outside. You know, it gets a bit mucky on the inside if you're doing that sort of stuff. Um, yeah. Which was yeah. always been okay, but you know when you don't have an animal in it, you've got this rather large pack that's nine nine tenths empty that you cinch down to try and stop it flapping around and whatever so mm-hmm. this concept is mm-hmm. you've got a 30 liter pack that's big enough for everything you need for a half day slash day one around bit of food and water and, and whatever uh and uh if you get something you pull that off drop the meat shelf stack everything close to the frame so that it's close to your to to, to the center of your body you know it's up and down yeah. your spine mm-hmm. it's not on the back of it which you know, makes you unsteady, and then you pack your um, or you strap your, your your main pack unit over top of that, similar to what you showed, slightly different setup. 
Um, yeah, I think it's a great a great unit. The the testing will be in the usage. Obviously, it's easy to look at it um, in the gun room, hang it up, spin it around, figure out how how clips and things work. That's been pretty good, but. I need to load it up and, and go and test it out. So mm. uh, keen to do that. I've had my eye on these things for quite some time. And um, so, it's know, great, great that our mates at Valhalla mm. had them um, mm. as a stocked item. So um, off we went, Mark, didn't we, the other day and and uh, picked a couple of items up, which is yeah. nice. Yeah. 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 Um, pack. John, got a pack. You all got packs. Oh, well, except you. No, no. <laughs> Mark changed, in one day, didn't you? Mark changed his order, to be fair. He, uh, he flip-flopped around and you know, he ended up with something different. Which is cool. Well, I thought it'd just be nice to give John a pack. That's all. So you know your right. your venture. That's fifty liter pack. Yeah, it's a big. It's a big pack. It's thirty cubic inches. Yeah. Yeah, three thousand. Yeah. That, that's that's yeah. That, that's a fifty liter pack. I mean, it doesn't even feel the twenty three hundreds that we run. It doesn't feel huge. Um, you know, if you knock mm. a fellow over, mm. it's sort of the perfect size to 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 carry a you know mm. all four quarters in the yeah. back straps out. But I'm you know I'm putting. Front, front, front legs in and um, hind quarters strapped to the side. I'm not quite sure it's designed to do that, to be honest. Um, strapping to the side is made for the rifle. Um, mm. You make it work, like a lot of these packs. They're they're strong enough; you can make them work. But but these things are purpose designed to, to meet all. And I think, you know, for the type of hunting that we're doing in state forest, it's it's perfect, absolutely perfect. I really like the fact that. You know, you can actually have those different size bags or mm -hmm. frame. And the first, that that minimum bag is thirty because you think thirty is not very big. But you thought, well, I'm not actually carrying any meat in it, so it's no, right. the meat it's goes actually, against the shelf. It's not yeah. it's not small at all. You know, what if you if you think about everything that's in your pack now that you're not, you know, that that you've got in your pack, a thirty is actually probably a really good size just for that load. Yeah, and because with the with the meat hauling function, that's all you're going to have in that bag. I actually think it's quite a not good idea. It's almost like, and I mean, there's a there's a video with that guy um, testing it, and he when he's when he's going to go off to get the the animal, he doesn't he just leaves the, the bag yeah. there and he goes and takes the frame. Yeah, so, so the frame so designed the frame to comes back, it. takes it off, puts the bag back on it. Yeah, yeah, well, puts the bag on, to take the rifle. Frame, takes it back up. So. That's right. So he's not carrying the bag down to the animal. He carry, you know, he carries just the frame, the picks it up, sort of comes back, and yeah. So you're not carrying that mm. load twice. So it's actually mm. quite a, you know, it's simplistic, but it actually makes a lot of sense. And the fact that you can then kind of go, well, I want to do an overnighter, so I put a fifty on there. Mm. And so now you can have Price a sleeping well bag too, if you look at them, you know. There. Um, to buy the extra bag, the I was dead. very surprised how well priced they were. Uh, uh, the frame itself, um, you know, that's the base. There are a couple of other brands that do that as well. Um, yeah. I feel like some of them are, you know, they're just a bit overpriced for average Joe to get one. These ones seem to be quite realistic. So we'll, we'll see how tough they are. They look they look crazy well made. So um, it'll be interesting to see how they handle it. Quality, quality looks great. Yeah, it does they look, look good. Yeah. It, it, as I said, I'd love to get my hand on one. And, um, <clears throat> spoken spoken to Ian and to oh no, oh, sorry, spoken to the to Tonga guys and hopefully get one up soon and try I'll see you another deer. See what's like. Yeah, we'll do that. Just go do one. Just hanging over. Just hanging over. Yeah. Just hanging uh, over. Yeah. You know, we, we, we talked about <laughs> our, our, our um, relationship with Valhalla the other day and one of the reasons why we thought this was a great um, a great relationship to start up was because of the range of gear that they had in the store. Actually going down there and having a look at it and mm. trying things on and, and figuring it out worked really well. The boots that they've got, man, they've got a massive a range mm. of boots. Um, like, and we're all, oh, you know, so many different varieties. Fans are lowers, but, um, you know, they were able to talk to us about other things that are coming and, and various different other boots that are similar. Um, you know, uh, a lot of a lot of the boots now made in Vietnam, I think you were saying, uh, and you can see the pricing. Mm, yeah. They're priced accordingly compared to the ones that are still made in Europe. But you know, he's able to point out they are able to point out um, boots that are that are doing well. Um, they're tested by soldiers. A lot, you know, a lot of their customers are soldiers, so they're they're buying things that are um, getting you know, uh, you know they're given a beating. So if they're going to work for them, they're, they're likely going to work for us. So the the advice is pretty good. Uh, it's worth dropping down there and having a chat. 
off oh, sure. Yeah, well, that's the thing, and there's there's they've seemed to be hitting finding new products, you know, new high quality stuff all the time. So there's uh, we were looking at those those other boots that are coming in. I think we can't talk about them at the moment, but they they look pretty cool. They're um a, more of a uh, a traditional full leather boot, but. Mm. Uh, if that's what it is, you know, if that's what you like, that they're coming in too, and they were they were also pretty reasonably priced. I mean, no yeah. one's cheap anymore, but they're, no, they're not. they were very yeah. reasonably priced. So that's what I really, I mean, that was a good thing about going to Valhalla and talking to Dave. There's just so much stuff that they mm. have, and there's also so much stuff that they're accessing. So you're just seeing new things all the time, which is great. Yeah, and being able to point to the product that is well priced and you know has has held up to test i think is really important uh you know this this pair of boots that we're going to we're going to trial we've got no idea what they're like which is why it's a trial um but they look really good the specs look really good the, mm. you know be interesting to see how they go and um yeah we'll let you know be good yeah look forward to giving them a trial and reporting back on them yeah, yeah john is going to be our test pilot yep so we'll see how they go in Nundal. Yeah. You're going to take a pair of backup boots? I always take – oh, I've learned my lesson on that. I always take extra pair of boots, and that's that's because I got washed out mm-hmm. the one year of the raw. I got caught in a massive storm, and my boots got flooded, and I always take extra boots. And a pair of gum boots. I always take gum boots as well for the rain and the wet. Yeah. So – Yeah. And the most. Cool. Mm. All right. I'm going to switch subjects. Sure. Sweet. Wouldn't be an episode without talking about Zolio. <laughs> uh, have you seen Zolio? No, that's not what this is about. I just wanted to. I found out. I'm so, scratch my back with this knife. Let, let, <laughs> let me let me start again. So, if we haven't told you, we have a hunt camp, and there's a whole bunch of people coming. And Zolio would be nice enough to give us some test devices to take along with us. So those who haven't experienced using one of these or are keen to understand it. Or they're going to get to take them out in the field and give them a give them a run. Um, so the conversation that goes with that is, well, how's that all going to work? Because they've got emergency contacts attached to them, they've got check-in contacts attached to them. Um, you know, when when you when you uh, register this device on their website, you put in all of those details. So I've got to do all of that before I go to camp. So when I go and give it to, hey, Jono, would you like to borrow one of these Zolios? And he says, yeah, that'd be great. Well. It's got all my contacts in it, and I, and I just needed to understand how this was actually going to work, because if Jono took this and jumped over the neighbor's fence and hurt himself and had to push the SOS button, um, it's going to call my emergency contacts, <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, which was, you know, starting to figure out how this That's all might work. Anyway, there is a way to do it, and we figured it out. But the feature that I found that was really, really cool with this thing, so you, let's say you own one. So Jono's got one, and um, let's uh-huh. say Mark wants to take it for a spin. Right? He wants to take it out. So, so all, all you've got to do if you've got someone that wants to borrow your device is get your friend to download the Zolio app. That's free. So you download the app for free. And then when you open the device, you turn the Zolio on, you open the device, and there's a button on the front of it uh, that you press, and it allows you to connect your phone to a Zolio device. All right? So this is the trial device. Uh, It just pops up and says, is this the IMI number? You have a look on the back, shows you the IMI number. You say, yes, that device is now paired to your app. All right? And that app was free. So Mm -hmm. if I've got a plan, because he's running a plan, a 30-day plan, and I lend this to, to Mark, uh, Mark will use my plan. He doesn't have to go and get a subscription just so he can use it once or twice. He can borrow it on my plan and you work it out amongst yourselves to reimburse each other, um, which I think is really awesome because you'd think that you couldn't use this without a subscription. I originally thought mm. people that were going to come to Hunt Camp were going to have to download and get a subscription if we couldn't get demo yeah. accounts sorted out, but you don't. Mm-hmm. So every single person that's coming can download the app and then they can all have... Um, Do it before you, know, you go. They- do it before you go. Do it before you go. Do it before we'll you go. Uh, we'll go to the tree. Do it before you go. Wi-Fi tree. There should be Starlink, um, but you never know whether we're going to get that to work. That's why we're oh, bringing okay. John. <laughs> That's right. Starlink, guys. Uh, <laughs> too much load. Uh, so um, so, That's a cool so if we're cool feature. So what? What? But that is a very cool feature. But what happens if Mark's using 
the Zolio connects to your account and hits the SOS button. Right. I'm glad you asked. Does your contact? I'm glad yeah. you asked. So, no. So I have my SOS and my contacts, but when you set this up mm-hmm. as a device on your account, you can set up whatever unique um, check-in and SOS contacts you want. Now, in this scenario, mm-hmm. because they're demo accounts, we're going to have a, a responsible adult that is not coming to camp who's going to be the group's <laughs> SOS contact. So we'll change all of the oh, devices. Okay. I, I, can, oh. I can see them already. Look, I'm the, yeah, I wouldn't do that. <laughs> okay, okay. Oh, look at yeah. that. Oh, well, yeah. yeah. So, so <laughs> them's so breaks. If you're, if you're down in the bush dear for and, me. Make, <laughs> and you hit this button, the first thing that's going to happen is Global Rescue are going to contact you personally via the Zolio device to find out what's going on. If you respond mm-hmm. right, and say, oh, yep, I've been bit by a snake, here are my GPS coordinates, they'll go, okay, we don't need to call your next of kin or your emergency contact. We've got hold of you. We'll send in the choppers. Uh, you, you know, Whatever the incident, you might have twisted your ankle yeah. and you hit the button, Global Rescue will contact you and say, well, look, look this is not life-threatening. We will send someone to the hunt camp and we will get someone down to you at some point, sit tight, but they're not going to send in, you know, the full cavalry. And that's the beauty of these things, I believe. Mm. Um, they can make good decisions on your behalf mm. to get you out of a bind. Yeah. Because yeah, and you can and you and you can communicate with them. So that's, that's right. Important. There's that level of telemetry between. Yeah. Yeah. That's, right. mm. that's it. Uh, so, it. So, so and, the and, other bit, and, of, and it's not even. Come up. Well, I said it's yeah. and and some of that telemetry is actually not even communication. So they can tell what battery charge you're at. Yeah, your phone so and your device. They, they your can phone say, battery, so they, they can. Your phone, so they're not going to. You know, they're device. not going to yeah. engage you in an in, uh, engrossing conversation if they know that your battery charge is at ten percent. They're going to say, "We can mm. see you, but stay where you are." Type thing. So they can respond mm. even more accurately because. They know more about the the unit itself. Yep, correct. Yeah. Yep. Um, so the other reason that's really important, and I'm unprepared, so Oops. you're going to need to talk amongst yourselves while I get this information. But the other reason that this is really important is uh, a lot of people don't know, and I didn't know until I started researching it. When we talked about this a little while ago, and I've I've, I've forgotten who it was. That, um, that jumped on the chat and said, but, yeah, but what are the costs? And I mm. had um, mm. incorrectly understood that um, that uh, emergency services were covered by Medicare and various other things. And that's uh, sadly no, not true. There's states, ambulances, yeah. states. So. Yeah, so mm. uh, I don't have the numbers and I'm trying to desperately find them and I should have done this beforehand because I had them. Um, to give you an example, um, and these numbers will be slightly wrong, but they'll be close enough. Uh, if you're in New South Wales and you're a New South Wales resident and you have an EPIRB of any kind and you push a button and they send medical support via an ambulance or a four-wheel drive ambulance or a helicopter, it's going to cost you somewhere around 1400 oh, bucks. Oh. About 1400 bucks. It's not going to cost you a lot more. Air to, or road. Air or road, doesn't matter. They just categorize that as a certain level of support and it's going to cost mm-hmm. you about 1400 bucks for someone to respond and come to you. Um, so that's something that I wasn't aware of. Uh, if you're in Queensland, this is where it gets really confusing. If you're in Queensland, the Queensland Ambulance Service will pick up that tab for you and then margin it up and bill you more. Uh, so it'll cost you 1600 bucks. Um mm-hmm. New South Wales doesn't do that in reverse. If you get uh, if you get a charge in Queensland and you're a New South Wales resident, you'll just get the direct charge. But each state has a different way that they deal with it. Regardless of that, it's going to mm. cost you under two grand, but it's you know it's it's something that's worth noting. Now, if you've got a normal EPIRB that is doesn't do any communication, you push the button, it's coming. Don't run away because they know who you uh-huh. were. Um, it's it's coming. <laughs> Yeah. 
Um, with devices like this, though, they can contact see you down there. Come out, out. Come out. They contact you first to Is figure out yeah. whether it's necessary to send somebody for you. And I think that's a really good mm. feature. If you've got um, your bank card with you. Yeah. <laughs> What's your credit card number? Um, so the the <laughs> other thing, the other thing, is um, medical insurance. Not all medical insurances will cover you for ambulance. So no. if you're with HCF, not a plug for HCF, but I'm with HCF. I contacted them to find out what my level of cover was, and they said um, that I was completely covered for any air oh, medical being pulled out of the bush, whatever it would be. If ever I need any type of ambulance, it's okay. But I rang a couple of other random healthcare providers to find out what they covered. And they didn't cover that. They covered normal ambulance, but air ambulance wasn't covered for rescue. It was covered for transport between one hospital and another, right? So it's not so all covered. If I want to just like go to the, go somewhere, hit the e <laughs> Tell them I'm both HBF and they'll send the chopper for me. <laughs> uh, uh, bring a pizza. It's an expensive, <laughs> pizza, it's an expensive Uber. What? It would well, be an HBF. We'll cover it. Yeah. Is, yeah. Mm, yeah, premium's going to go up though, but yeah. Yeah. Let's not make light of this. Bringing a pizza is not okay, a cool reason sure. to push the button. <laughs> All right. It's not a cool reason. Um, but it's worth knowing. The other thing is if you're going to go into a situation, let's say you're going to head over to New Zealand and go and do the Alps trip or something like that, you can get you can ring a HCF or one of the other ones and you can get ambulance cover only. If you can't afford full-on private mm. health, which a lot of people either can't afford or don't believe they need it, you can just ring up and get a cover note for a month for – or not a cover note, but you can pay for a month and get ambulance cover. Yeah. And that will then cover you for pushing the button kind if you like need to Travel do it. insurance type stuff. I think that's really important. I didn't know it was going to cost me two grand or fifteen hundred bucks. I think so. Will it stop me pushing the button? Not a chance. Mm. If I need it, I need it, and I hope it doesn't no. stop anyone else pushing the button because it's it's going to cost them a dollar. But it's nice to be aware. That's the end of my lecture. Thank Good tonight. Thank you. I'll Is have to uh, find out who you find out who you called to know if whether <laughs> I'm covered or not. So. We'll have a chat offline. Yeah, I'm not going to say who it was and wasn't. Um, cool. What else we got? Uh, let me think. I am tired, so my brain's not working that well. Uh, so, Pax, yes. Deer, Boots, yes. yes. Valhalla, yes. Boots. Breda, done. yes. Dear, yes. Mm. Zolio, yes, because we always have to do Zolio. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to shout out on my too, but I've, I've lost the page. Uh, whoever yes. it was, their blah, blah, the blah, 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 comment. Well, there you go. <laughs> there you can be happy. Blah, blah, Zolio comment. There you go. So, oh, we've um, spoken about, we spoke about. Uh, yeah, that's right. John has crying about trial cameras because he bought the wrong thing off Amazon. Somehow that's my problem. You miss you miss sold me. No, I just so. gave you the one I got, mate. That's a, it's not like I went looking for it. I just went to my pre-purchase one and went, this is what I bought. It's not the one you bought. So, that's it. Didn't even, didn't even come with the memory card. You said they did. Oh, yeah, mate. You stuffed up. That's all you did. That's what it is. And I, oh, should we you call it now? Up. I'm going to call it now. We've got a legend of the week. Oh, I'm going to do it. Michael Granger. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. This now, well, look, look, this is actually oh, important. Granger, yeah. Um, he spent a couple of years, if not more, honing his bow hunting skills so that he can get out and shoot his first deer, and he bloody did it. He sent us a picture the other uh, this morning. I think it was this morning. Mm. It was this morning. He sent us a picture this morning. He's on his way out of the bush. He shot his first deer, fellow deer, with a uh, with a, and it was a it was a Reasonable was a handy buck. It was a with, with look, nice, looking, look, Bloody, nice looking deer on the ground. Good on you. Perseverance pays mm. off. Um, so he's done a cracking job. And um, we also call out Hobbsy. And I who, think there's uh, a photo of him, him ho ho holding a really nice a... stag. Oh, mm. Hobbsy got a cracking stag, that's for sure. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Mark had a very, he went over to New Zealand for a week and got himself a really nice deer. 
Yeah. So um, if you're a bow hunting enthusiast, thing it was, yeah. If you're a bow hunting enthusiast, Michael will join us back on the podcast in the next couple of weeks uh, to talk us mm. through his journey as a bow hunter, and uh, hopefully he's um, still got some of that bloody fire burning in him from knocking this one over today because he was pretty bloody pumped this morning. Um, so good yeah. on him. Good mm. on him. I mean, he's really one of those one of those guys who's really got in. You know, he works for Apex Hunting. He's gone into really oh, he's immersed himself in it. So it's, yeah. you know, and and that's what that's how you get there. I mean, it's a damn tough game he's in, and he's mm. he's managed to manage to get a deer, which is you know, there's plenty of guys you talk to that they don't that just doesn't happen. So he's done well, that's for sure. Yeah, persistence pays off. That's it. That's it. Mm. So, I'm still not taking and the boat. We, there was a post tonight as well. <laughs> oh, I'm not taking, I, I'd, shoot, I'd shoot the plastic pig around the side of the house, but that's about well, it. Actually, it's fun with the boys. It it's fun. It is fun. I'm not sure if it was Michael or one of the other guys challenged us to a bow hunting slam. Really? Who well, was that? Mm, that seems a little now. silly. <laughs> Oh, that's upping the stakes a little bit. <laughs> well, even if it wasn't a slam, yeah, well, I'll use a, I'll use a the pillager. I use a shotgun. That's kind of that's. I'll use <laughs> a shotgun. I use a shotgun. That's bow range. Semi-auto. <laughs> that's bow range. Uh, no, no, nice under over. Goats and the pillager could be a, would be a, goat would be goat a good the for a bow. Could be the go with the bows. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Have to put some thought into Thanks, that. Billy. Can't knock a challenge back. Mm. Well, I do have a bow. <laughs> Did I? So have I. Jono? I actually, you got a... I've actually got a couple of bows. I don't, I, I, I don't have a bow. That's not what I, I haven't got into that yet. Although I've I got do, a bow. I do see it in my future for some reason. Yeah. I do. It's they're great. For, for me, it's just great to shoot it here at home. That's the thing about yeah. it. You can. I'm, I'm often on the Apex website having a look at the bows, seeing what's out there. Yeah, getting... I've, I've gone very traditional. I've got a, you know, recurve Ooh. that's. They like the shit here at at the house. Mm. I'll go compound. I'll go compound. Yeah, I've got both. To do it, I think. I've got both. I like. I like the. I love the recurve. It's. It's you know take down bow, so it can, collapses and you can throw it in your pack type thing. It's really good. Uh, thing about them is uh, practice, 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 practice. You know you need that muscle memory. You need to be very mm. tuned in with that compound bow. Oh, man, the bow hunters are probably not going to like me for saying it. Um, compound bow you can put down for three, four, five, six months. You can pick it up, have a few sessions out on the range, and you'll get yourself back proficient to 30 metres. I think you need to practice, practice if you're going to be taking those 40, 50, 60 metre shots. But, you know, I can pick up the mm. compound that's behind me after leaving it for three months and be pretty comfortable of grouping well enough at, 20 to 30 metres. Uh, and I found that, you know, I've decided to pick it up and take it to Severn, for example, and go and chase goats. Um, and you, you knock a couple down. But you can get in nice and close with goats. Great thing about goats is you can call them, you can trick oh. them, you can get in close to them, and you end up only taking 10, 15-metre shots anyway. So, um, God, it's good fun. kind of want to do it now. Oh, take it to Nundal. Increase no. my, my odds. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, 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 no. I've actually taken it the last two well, times. Next slam. Next slam. Oh yeah, you could Have use it? all the help. You could you... use all the help. Oh, oh. Do, you, do you remember that one trip to Nundal years and years ago, where that guy rocked up with his trad bow, was compound. Um, yeah, yeah. His recurve that he had yeah, handmade. Yeah, big, big, big beard. Do you remember that? that, that yeah, he was cool. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. Yeah, he was, from, yeah, he was. He was a train train driver. That was him. Yeah. He rocked up. He drove from. Oh, he was some up north in, from somewhere in Queensland. Drove all the way down with his handmade, a handmade recurve bow, and was chasing deer in in Nundal State Forest in the the rut. It was like fair play to you. He was a good yeah. guy actually. It um, was fun. Uh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Takes all kinds. Got me thinking about that. Yeah. I could do. Off at your red block, Mark. Yeah, should... No, not red block. Um. Too, 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 too easy to lose a deer in that scrub up there. Mm. 
and I, I, that's what I'd feel. I I don't like that, but I mean, goats in the pillow go. It's flat. If you hit them, you'd be able to trail. If you, you know, if you if you if you didn't drop them in the spot, you'd be able to follow them up. So you right, can get next right pillow. On, next pillow trip is is bows. You can get right on top of them. Um, I mean, I've, yeah. say, I've 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 hunted goats with shotguns and pelican, and you can get right on top of them. You shoot them with buckshot or slugs? Buckshot. Buckshot. Oh. And before right. anyone gets silly and goes, you can't shoot goats and deer with the shotguns. Just ask yourself why they call it buckshot. Because it's Felicia. meant to shoot buck with. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> it's named by a bloke called Buck. So it's, no, it's meant for I, deer. I'll have to deer find line. out who put that challenge out and we'll see if we can sort something out. That sounds like a lot of fun. Uh, mm. I'm sure we'll get some other takers to come join the party. Sounds like I've got to get a bow. <laughs> yeah, it yeah. does. Sounds like it? I've got to get a bow. No, well, well, yeah. I'll chat to Michael. Mm. He'll, he'll sort you out. Yeah. Oh, definitely. Yeah, for sure. Because that's, mm-hmm. that, that's where I've got all my bows from, to be honest. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's where we got all the three of them I've got, we've got so far. We've got them from Apex. That's how it kind of crossed paths originally. Cool. Because they, they, you know, they were just a really good store. And they, they, so, yeah, I think that's that's how I actually first met him through Apex. Or you just we were talking about it or something like that. But, yeah, we've crossed paths through Apex. Okay. Cool. Can't what else? think of anything, else, gents. Wrapping it up. I think so. Yeah. Time to run national I'm go to bed. Yep. Get up and do it all again. That's sure. It. All right. Cool. Going to spend. Uh, I've got. I've got a free day tomorrow, so I'm going to spend it working on my shed. Have fun. I'm, Enjoy that. I'm remodeling my shed. <laughs> Working. All right, we'll call That's it there. Thanks, fellas. Cool. Thanks, gents. Catch you soon. Adios.